and welcome to another of Mrs. Catnell's phonics lessons. This is lesson 25, would you believe? Uh, so lesson 25, we are working on Mr. Wolf's pancakes. I'm just gonna tilt this a bit because you're missing half of my head and that's a little strange. So, Mr. Wolf's pancakes, we read it yesterday. Quite a good story, actually. I like how it finishes, it's quite funny. Everyone was quite naughty in it with some bad manners going on, but then Mr. Wolf gets the better of them. So, just in case you missed it yesterday, I'm going to read it again, but also it's a fantastic idea with any book that we're reading or working on is to have it more times than once, lots of times. So I'm going to read it one more time through, and then we're going to look at uh, going back to our plans for our party. So the party that we're having at home, who are we going to invite? And we're going to look at how we're going to invite them today, okay? So settle down, relax yourself. Let's have Mr. Wolf's pancakes another time. One day, Mr. Wolf was feeling hungry. He fancied some pancakes, and we can see this in his thought bubble here. Big pie pancakes. Yum, yum, he said, licking his lips at the thought of a big pile of fresh, delicious pancakes. <laughs> Mr. Wolf had never made pancakes before, so he took his big recipe book down off the shelf and looked inside. But wolves can't read very well, and Mr. Wolf had trouble making sense of it. So he went to get some help from his neighbours. Mm, I wonder if they'll be helpful. He called on Chicken Lickin, who lived nearby. Please, can you help me read this, he asked. No, said Chicken Lickin, slamming the door in Mr. Wolf's face. Bang! <gasps> oh dear, <sighs> sighed Mr. Wolf. He sat down slowly to read the book and worked out what he needed all by himself. And we know as pancake specialists, looking at the three ingredients that he's thinking about, he has, he's worked it out. He's got his flour, his eggs and his milk. Well done, Mr. Wolf. Mr. Wolf looked for, in his cupboard for the ingredients, but he couldn't find anything he needed. I'll go to the shop, he decided, and he settled down to write a shopping list. Mm, good idea, Mr. Wolf, I should do that more often. I'm very forgetful and I always end up coming home without the things I desperately need. But wolves aren't very good at writing. So Mr. Wolf decided to call on Wee Willy Winky. You're very clever, said Mr. Wolf. Can you help me write my shopping list, please? No, said Wee Willy Winky. Go away, he slammed his door. Bang! There's no need to be like that, said Mr. Wolf quietly. I imagine he's feeling a little on the sad side right now. Mr. Wolf sat down and tried very hard with his writing until he had made his shopping list all by himself. Now he needed to count his money to make sure he had enough. But wolves aren't very good at counting, so he went to the gingerbread man for some help. Can you help me count my money, please? He asked very politely. No, I'm too busy to bother with you, said the gingerbread man, slamming his door. Bang! There he is looking rather mean. What a meany old gingerbread man. So poor Mr. Wolf had to sit down and count his money. It took him a long time and he had to check it three times before it was right. But he did it all by himself. Mr. Wolf needed a basket to carry his shopping, so he called on Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, she's bound to be lovely, isn't she? Please, may I borrow your basket? He asked very nicely. What do you think she said? I'm not lending my basket to you, said Little Red Riding Hood. Now clear off. Oh, I was not expecting that. So Mr. Wolf set off to the shop without a basket. I'll manage, he said. Here he is at Old Mother Hubbard's shop. He went into the shop with his list. 
Oh, Mama Hubbard there, she's so lovely. He looked at his list, remembered what he needed, counted out his money and carried the eggs, milk and flour home all by himself. Ooh, those eggs are really making me nervous. Now it was time to make the pancakes, but wolves aren't very good at cooking. So Mr Wolf called on the three little pigs. Please can you help me cook my pancakes? I'll share them with you, he said kindly. No chance, chorused all of the pigs, slamming their doors. Bang, bang, bang. Mr Wolf felt sad because nobody wanted to help him. He does seem sad. He's got his hanky out and he's mopping his eyes. Mr Wolf went home and started to make the pancakes all by himself. Soon there was a huge pile of delicious pancakes on the table, all ready for eating. Oh, look at that lovely smell coming off of them. And he's flipping away with the last one there. What a clever guy. Now, as Mr. Wolf had been making his pancakes, a lovely smell had drifted out of the kitchen. All his neighbours could smell it and it made them feel very hungry. Watch that smell making its way around the village. Everyone's having a sniff. They wanted some pancakes too. They decided to try their luck. Mm. So they knocked on Mr Wolf's door. Give us some of your pancakes, said the rotten lot. Why should I give any to you, said Mr Wolf. Not one of you would help me. We'll help you eat them, replied Mr Wolf's neighbours nastily. Anyway, we're not going away until you give us some. Mr Wolf thought very hard for a moment. There was only one decent thing to do. Oh, very well then, he sighed. You had better come in. Mr. Wolf opened the door wide and whoosh! His greedy neighbours rudely pushed him aside and dashed down the hall. Mr. Wolf shook his head, shrugged his shoulders, followed them into the kitchen and when they were all in... He gobbled them all up. And that was the end of his unhelpful neighbours. And then with his bulging tummy, not quite full, Mr Wolf sat down to eat his pile of pancakes. And he did it all by himself. Well, there was nobody else around. <laughs> They're all in here. There's big old belly. My goodness me. Right, okay. So that was our lovely story of Mr. Wolf's Pancakes by our author, Jan Fernley. There we are. Right, so what we need to do today. We made our party plan yesterday, a bit like this. We decided what food we would want to eat at our party and drinks. We decided who was coming, who we wanted to invite. We decided what games we were going to play and where it was going to take place, okay? So this is going to be quite exciting if you're having a party on Friday. This is something to look forward to, isn't it? So today is the most important day in that we have to invite some people. Otherwise, no one's going to turn up to our party. So I have got here and I took this off of good old Twinkle which is an invitation template. Now, if you're in my class, I have sent one of these food to you on Google Classroom so you can fill out your own one. But I think it might be nice just to do your own nice one, to be honest. I'm gonna get the guys in class to write this, but then stick it on a nice piece of colored card and decorate the outside. Because often invitations are very pretty on the outside as well, aren't they? So, but the most important things that need to go inside are on this invitation. So you can see at the top it says De uh, design a party invitation, okay? And then underneath it says dear, which is a bit like to, who it's going to go to. You are invited to, and then you need to fill in what it is you're inviting them to underneath. 
Then you've got the time, otherwise they might turn up early or late and miss it. You've got the date, so what exact date it's happening, and it's going to be for this Friday. Where it's happening, what place, and who it's from, who's inviting them. They have to know that, don't they? They have to know whose party they're going to. So, if you are in my class, you can take this off of Google Classroom, or you can look at it on the screen if you're not printing it off, and then do your own one on your own piece of paper while using this as your guide, okay? So, uh, dear, so who are you going to invite? Now, what we've decided in the classroom, and I imagine you might want to do this at home, because it's kind of cool to pretend to be somebody else, okay? So we've all decided to be different characters from Mr. Wolf's Pancakes. And we've got quite a few of the same character. There was a lot of Mr. Wolf. Uh, we've got some extra chicken lickings, funny enough. I seem to have got the part of a little pig. Um, so we're going to invite those characters. So rather than saying dear and then putting mum if you're at home or dear dad or dear whatever your brothers and sisters are called, maybe give them a part as a character from Mr. Wolf's Pancakes because that's what our party is based on, Mr. Wolf's Pancakes. So you might want to put dear chicken licking or dear little pig. So it's what character you're going to invite. So you've got to find out from your mums and dads or brothers and sisters what character they want to be and invite them. Now, I am going to do this invitation as though I'm going to be inviting chicken licking, okay? So I'm going to get my pen here. And where it says dear, I'm going to put dear chicken licking. Now, if you've been following the phonics, then you'll know how to do the first sound in chicken. It'll be the ch sound. So we need a nice capital curly cuff because it's uh, Chicken Licken's name. And then a uh, huff to make that digraph ch. Ch i. Ch i. K. Chick. And it's at the end of a syllable. So we need two, the curly cuff and the kicking cuff. So two, chicken and then Licken. Do you know I have to just double check how Licken is spelled because it's an unusual name, isn't it? All right, okay, got it. So Licken, Licking. It's the capital all because it's still the uh, first letter of their name. And licking, it's an I. Lick, it's the K sound at the end of a syllable. So two of them again. Chicken licking, same ending. N. Dear chicken licking, you are invited to, is invited to a party. Okay, so A. Party. P ah, we know that diagraph. It's made with an a and a r. Party. Party. We need a t there. Now, we do know how to make an e sound, so let's go with the one we know from our phonics lessons. So, part e. Well, how do we know how to make the e sound in our phonics lessons? It is an f. Followed by an F, isn't it? So we're going to write party like that, okay? Because it's how we know how to spell it. You are invited to a party. And what time is it going to happen? Now, this will be up to you mainly at home. I think our one here at school is probably going to be uh, maybe the afternoon. So I'm going to put that it is at two, well, let's go one o'clock. So one o'clock which actually you can definitely use your phonics knowledge to work out how to spell. So time at one o'clock, the date on Friday is still going to be February, but it's going to be February the 26th. So I'm going to put the number 26 and then February. Now you might need a bit of help with February. It's a tricky old month to spell. Or you could just put Feb will be good because you will definitely be able to do that with your phonics knowledge, okay? The place where it's happening, well, for you guys, it will be at home. So you need at, probably at my house. Now, we know the tricky word my. We can certainly read it. Writing it might be a bit tricky at this point. The m is helping you. And the tricky i sound is made of a y. So at my house. So now, um, the owl sound we haven't learnt yet. So I'm going to show you how to spell that. It's an r. And an uh, and then a s, and then very strangely, there's an et on the end, making no noise at all. Okay, so at my house, and then from, and it won't just be from whoever your name is, because you're going to be a character. Now you might be Mr. Wolf. Okay, so 
and you might just put from Mr. And you can see the spelling on the front of my book. So Mr. is going to be one of our tricky words in the next phonics phase as well. So there is Mr. and then Wolf there. Okay, we don't want this on the end. So Mr. Wolf. So Mr. Wolf. Okay, so there's my invitation. That's just what you need to do at home. So you need to design the other side as well. So when you wrote out the details, I would stick it on a bit of card or just draw lovely fancy pictures on there. Fold it up and then make sure it gets delivered to the person that's being invited to your party, okay? Otherwise you'll be on your own at your party. So invites are extremely important. Right, I am going to see you again tomorrow when we have um, a little think about how what we need to get ready for our party. Uh, you might want to consider dressing up a little bit for your party as well. So depending what character you are, what are you going to wear to look like that character? So that's something you can think about leading up to tomorrow's lesson. Okay then guys, take care and I will see you tomorrow. Bye bye.